They know how toxic their products are. They know what these chemicals do. And I, all I can say is shame on you for putting this out there to us and making profit off of us, knowing that these are toxic. Shame on you. That's all I got. Growing a Healthy Child, where we help busy parents grow healthy kids with less stress and more joy. So we're back with Jean Schumacher. This is part two of this crazy conversation <laughs> she's having with us about the cosmetics and healthcare products and the chemicals all, in our environment and all the products you never would have known. Holy moly. That you use every day. Wow. Like I never yeah. knew there was that much going on in my baby shampoo. We have so many questions and I'm sure you have all the answers. <laughs> or at least you can point say all the answers. <laughs> I wouldn't say all the answers, but I have <laughs> studied this for a while. I mean, I just had somebody messaged me because I do, I do webinars on these, you know, these toxins and, and whatnot. And someone had attended one of my webinars and she started, she had, she got hemorrhoids. She's like, mm -hmm. I thought hemorrhoids were for old people. I guess I must be old now, but you know, and she wrote me this great epistle about the hemorrhoids. And she said, I went to the CVS or Rite Aid or whatever she went and she says she bought one of the, she was going to buy one of the hemorrhoid, hemorrhoid creams. And she turned around and looked on the, on the back of it, how toxic it was. And she was just horrified. She put it back and then she came home and, and she started using the Pure Haven products and she started using those and she couldn't believe she used them for her, her hemorrhoids and it worked. She was like surprised. And right. so when you start to realize, you know, it's kind of like pulling the curtains back on how toxic these products are to us. And yeah, right. it is just so sad. It is so sad. And even within the medical, you know, the, or the pharmaceutical industry, you're seeing a lot of additives to medications like dyes, you know, in the, in the, the pill itself, things like that. Like why, why, why even put that in there? I get it for color identification, whatever, but right. it's having an impact on us, you know, and we have no say in this. You know, right. so it's right. it's very disturbing on so many levels. So it really is. Yeah. And the fact that you mentioned it floored me as a pharmacist, you mentioned about the tamoxifen and how right. you can certain chemicals that you're using every day can render that useless. I didn't even know that <laughs> for the amount of money that people spend and personal anxiety, the energy, the wear and tear yeah. on your family, the everything that the whole thing that we would subject women to treatment oh, no. without letting them know that the some of the most common chemicals in their home, their shampoo, their whatever, yeah. is counteracting the treatment that they're taking, which is literally for so many women, it feels right. life-threatening. The treatment yes. feels life-threatening, right? Right. Well, you're, you're putting a, a poison into your system to try and kill this systemically. That's right. and That's and. Right. You know, I had one one woman who came to me and I do what's called the kitchen rescue. Like I literally go to your house, we clean out the refrigerator, we clean out the cupboards, we learn how to read labels. And then we go to the grocery store, we go, go I teach you how to shop. Then we come back, we prepare like four or five meals so that you have healthy food. And, uh, you know, this is an all day affair. So I'm at her house and she had had under, she had breast cancer. She underwent the, you know, first round of tamoxifen and it didn't work. Then she had a double mastectomy and was now on the next level of chemotherapy. And at one point I had to go up to the bathroom and literally I, we had trash cans in the house, the, the big trash cans, you know, we were like, like, you know, pitching mm -hmm. and I wanted to use the bathroom and on her counter, I'm like, can you bring the trash can up here? Cause like, I, I mean, I'm like, sweetheart, this is why your tamoxifen didn't work. Like she must've had 10 products on her counter that she was using daily that it all had parabens in it had incredible that's right that's so right. that leads me to another question that i have you talked about bioaccumulation and the yeah. fact that as you use these products more and more they just build up in your system more and more as right. you start eliminating these products how quickly does it take your body to get rid of those chemicals and is there so anything you can do to speed that process up well, there are certain things like, for example, cilantro. Cilantro will talk, you know, especially like metals and things like that. It'll attach onto those and escort them out of the body. There are certain certain herbs and things like that that can help speed it up. 
you know, one of the things is by going whole food plant-based and getting rid of a lot of the toxins that are in our foods, you know, like the processed foods and things like that, um, that will help because you'll start to, you're going to lose weight, you know, when you go plant-based, I mean, you're just going to lose weight unless you're like eating handfuls of cashews and things like that, you're going to lose weight. So you, as you start to lose weight, you're going to be breaking down that fat and you're going to be breaking those down periodically and getting rid of them out of your system as well. So that's one way to do it, but changing to a whole food plant-based diet and that fiber also is going to help to escort these toxins out of your system. But it is, it is intense as you start to purge these chemicals from your body. And most people think, you know, that this is a, I've had people go plant-based and was like, I felt better when I was eating crap. It's like, yeah, because right now your body's releasing all these toxins and you can feel like you're coming down with a cold. You can feel like you're, uh, you know, pimples or a rash, or you just feel like crap, you know, or you're flushing your face, you know? And I can tell even now I still have weight to lose and I can tell like when I'm burning fat because I, I feel the toxins coming out of me. I do without question. So there are some things that you can do to help speed up getting some of the chemicals out. There's certain things that you can do that, it, you know, that can help you along this process. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So another question, since you mentioned the whole food plant-based aspect of it, yeah. um, when people switch or start changing their diet, that can be in itself overwhelming. And where do you even start? And then once you kind of master that, and then you learn about all these chemicals, oh boy, how, like where to even start? So is there one particular place that you would recommend or like one particular product that you would recommend people get rid of? Or would you go all in and just try and clear everything out? You've got to try and clean it up, especially before you get pregnant. You know, we recommend at least a year to clean your body out in the pregnancy advantage, you know, coming into and before you get pregnant, you know, before shields go down and, you know, you want to try, try and get pregnant at least a year to clean up your body and get rid of the toxins and top off all your nutrients, you know, especially, you know, through a plant-based diet, that's our basic recommendation. But obviously we get people that have been trying to get pregnant and can't. So we get them onto a whole food plant-based diet. We get them to clean out their bodies. We try and hold them off from trying to conceive for a little bit so we can help clean up their bodies first and heal them. So that's what we do in the pregnancy advantage. Um, it, it is overwhelming, you know, and women have no clue. They have no idea. You know, especially, you know, I think the Red Cross had done a study on umbilical cords and found a phenomenal amount of chemicals. The kid's not even an hour old coming out of the chute and already got, it's already loaded with toxins. Do you think that's going to have an impact on their development? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you a parent or caregiver who is unhappy about how your child eats at home? Wouldn't it be great if you were part of an active, well-informed, supportive community where you could work to transform how we feed our kids so we could make a difference for them and for the planet as a whole? Well, you can. That community actually exists. It's a thing. It is. Join us and get involved. Become a member of Plant-Based Nutrition Movement. There's no cost to join. Join the Six Million Seeds Coalition and launch a Six Million Seeds project in your area. Contact us at 6mseeds at pbnm.org. We want you there. Yeah. No, for sure. So let me ask you another couple of questions. You mentioned polyvinyl chloride, I believe. Mm -hmm. Just recently, there was that lovely train derailment. Right. In Ohio, oh where I don't know how much of that. It was that, right? That escaped into our environment there. Um what what are the effects? Do you know what the effects of polyvinyl chloride are in, in people in the environment? It's it's not good. I mean, the bottom line is because it's going to stay in the environment for a long time. It's hard to clean up and it's going to have a definite impact. I mean, just breathing it, it's going into the into our aquifers because it goes through to the ground. I mean, that's one of the things that that most people don't realize is that 
since World War II, we have just been inundated with these chemicals. And it's not just that chemical, but like, let's say you're using that foaming bath cleaner in the bathtub that you're trying not to breathe because you realize how toxic it is. I mean, you don't need to, uh, you know, an, uh, an analytical chemist to tell you that this is toxic. You're, you're trying not to breathe it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it so grabs that's your throat and <laughs> it's like assaults your face as you're trying to. Right. Get or I would spray it and turn the fen bathroom fan on and then leave the room. Mm -hmm. You know, this is back in the day. And all of that's going down your drain. And especially if you're in a municipality, a city that goes to the water treatment plant. And most, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been to quite a few and they more or less operate this way, but obviously there's some differentiation, but here's basically what happens. The water comes in and it goes through a filtration system and that gets rid of the bigger chunks. Okay. You know, from right. your toilet and whatever gets rid of the big chunks. And then they throw chlorine onto it to kill whatever bacteria is going to be there. Then they bubble it to try and get some of the chlorine to go out into the environment. And then most wa the water is federally regulated. It has to have a pH of normal of seven. Now, all of these chemicals are still there because most of these chemicals are very tiny molecules that can go right through the filtration system. It's like you walking through a door, you know, mm -hmm. it's that easy for it to go through. And so there's all these chemicals that are still there in this water. So what do they do? Now it's very acidic, this water, very, very acidic. So what do they do? They add sodium hydroxide to the water to raise the pH up. Uh, last time I checked, that's the main ingredient in Drano. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what's coming out of your tap, along with all those chemicals that are still there. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, you know, more or less, that's how they, they operate in terms of, of cleaning up your water. I mean, there's some that are different and better, you know, and better is going to be more expensive, you know, to, to try and filter out these, these chemicals. So it's still there in the systems. And so once it gets into our environment, it's very difficult to break it down. A lot of these chemicals. Uh, so yeah, they're still there. When you start to look at things that are in our environment. So like if you go up and I, I, one of my geology teachers would do one year in the Antarctica and the other one in the Arctic and they would create these stairs, cut them into the snow and going down. And they could tell approximately into this, you know, mm -hmm. the sedimentary layers of the snow, they could tell, I think it was 1939, uh, exactly. I, mean, I can't remember if it's 39 or 40, or whatever. That's when they started doing tests on the atomic bombs, right? And they were doing on like on the bikini atolls and stuff like that and, and whatnot. So far away, but yet goes up into the atmosphere, comes back down as snow, so they can tell. So it's radioactive at this point in the snow and not radioactive below it. So you're thinking mm -hmm. that the Antarctic is going to be this pristine place. Uh, no, no, all those chemicals, like polar bears, you know, are mm -hmm. inundated with chemicals. Like they haven't even remotely been in, encountered in their environment. Mm -hmm. But yet they have a lot of chemicals already in their body. Huge. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So then going back to the water, do the home filtration systems work? And if so, is there a better one than others? There definitely are. And they actually, the environmental working group has a whole thing on, on water filters. You want to try and afford the best that you possibly can, because you could, you can spend a ridiculous amount of money. And I mean, a ridiculous amount, like for home filtration systems, things like that. Um, personally, myself, one of the things that I do is Every town is supposed to, to do an analysis of their water quarterly, and they put the results on their the town website. So you can pull off what the major chemicals are. And there's a company that I found in California. I They build custom uh, filtration systems based upon your needs, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It's called ironfaucet.com, I think it is. And so you can call them up and say, here's my, my report for my water. What would you recommend? And they'll tell you. So I have a four stage water filtration system on my house that I, you know, for my, for my drinking and cooking and, and whatnot, all the water that, that goes directly into me. They also have one for the, the shower that helps to do that. Or no, not ion faucet, but um, then my water goes up into what's called an ionizer. And so it goes through another filtrate, yet another filtration system, but yet it also then goes across platinum plates and is broken apart into the ions. And I can change with the touch of my button, you know, the pH of my water and can use it for different things. 
Like for example, I wash my my produce in water that's 11.5, which is very alkaline. And what that does is it emulsifies the oils. Even organic produce uses pesticides and they're oil-based. So you cannot believe the stuff that comes off of my produce, even though it's organic, because that pesticide, it emulsifies it and breaks it down. It's incredible. So that's what I do. And I, I, it's incredible, but the average person is not going to be able to afford that. You get whatever the best filtration you can. And one of the things, there's two things that I measure in terms of a filtration system is one is the pH, which is the measure of how acid or alkaline something is, but also ORP, oxidation reduction potential. And there is nothing out there, nothing, even like, for example, like Berkey water filtration systems, they don't measure the ORP. They don't. Okay. So Berkey can help get your water down to a, you know, filtrate, filter it down and get it down to, you know, relatively close to normal to, to a pH or, you know, not acid, not base neutral. So, but they don't measure the ORP, which is the oxidation reduction potential. So the water is almost all oxidizing. I've tested so many different waters, uh, bottled waters in particular. That's another huge area of concern is bottled waters, you know? Hmm. So I have another question about water. This is a great subject. Um, so you were talking about contaminants in water and all of that. Yes, what you're just saying. And you were also talking about the lead in the soil from right. the lead um, fuels from so long ago. There are still many, many communities in the United States that have lead pipes, right? Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of those communities are inner city areas, the older areas, the crumbling areas, which sadly, it's a lot of people who are lower income uh, struggling <laughs> in those areas. So, you know, I think about it, uh, so my history is as a public health nurse, right? And I think about how many inner city children, low income children already facing very difficult circumstances for all kinds of reasons. Right. And they're dealing with lead in their water, mm -hmm. right? Which also affects them mentally, emotionally, their development and all that. So these kids, you know, I see it so often. This, it, it winds up affecting whole zip codes of children, right? These toxins, lead in this case, in, in the environment and in the water. Um, not that there's really anything else to say about that other than it's a, uh, it's a tragedy, you know, it's it is. Tragedy. And it's not just, it's not just inner city. Like for example, I was uh, born and raised in a town called Cheshire, Connecticut. And it used to be Cheshire was a very big mining town. And it was in certain areas of the town where they created and dug down deep into these mines and this one area in my town is renowned for, it's a cancer pocket. So anybody who was like born and raised there, like people that, that I went to high school with, a lot of them who live there in that area are dead. Mm. And all, and they keep track of this because of the cancer, because it, it you know, I think it's CheshireCancer.com or org or something like that. But they track this because it, all the chemicals that they took out of the ground, and this is back in the 1800s now, mind you, okay, that this was happening. And so the people today that have built homes over these old mines, some of them haven't been filled. And there's like these places all of a sudden, like their backyard just collapses because they sunk in because the mine below them, which they didn't know they were above a, an old mine shaft, they Great. sunk and fell in and it's now this pit in their backyard. So that's happened several times in, in various places in Cheshire, but it, these chemicals that people don't realize that their home is in a, a cancer zone kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Love Canal is another example that yes. they had the chemical toxins that from this chemical plant that they were going out and dumping into the neighborhood. Then the plant got yeah. sold. The, a realtor came in or, construction people bought the land, built beautiful homes on top of it. And everybody in the town was getting sick with a variety of different ailments, but all getting sick. 
And it was because of these toxins that they were being exposed to. So it's not just the inner city, it's every place, you know, so you really have to be careful and look at where you're living. You know, up here on Cape Cod, there is a air force base, which has polluted a lot of the, because it's, uh, you know, the, the chemicals that they use in jets and things like that, that has gotten into the water. And so that's another huge issue for people down on that end end of the Cape. So, you know, you have to look around where you're living. It's not just lower income, although that you do see a lot of that. special offense, what happens in lower income and lower socioeconomic status. That's a, yeah, that's a special thing. Everybody is is susceptible. There's no place that's not, Mm -hmm. that goes untouched, I'll say. But when you're already- yeah, when it's already a, well, you've a got so many disadvantages going up against you to begin with, and then to add That's this right. insult to add injury, this insult, yeah, it's it's horrible, and it because is. it's a it's a again, you know, we're talking about how it impacts children. It's right. what the child has been fed from before they were born, right? right, and what their parents were fed from before they were born. In some cases, yeah. That's right really so devastating devastating it is devastating and it can and there is a whole study coming out called epigenetics right now and how Mm -hmm. these toxins can have impact on you for generations generations and it's 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 like wow so this is one of the reasons why deborah shapiro and i we created the pregnancy advantage because if we're going to make any changes any headway on this planet we've got to get to the mothers before they have children we've right. got to get to them so that they understand how important their pregnancy is and to make sure that they're eating the highest quality nutritional products that they can find within their area you know and making sure that they're not exposing themselves to environmental toxins right Mm-hmm. And I mean, there is some glimmer of hope, right? That even once you say you go through your pregnancy and you didn't know, so many right. pregnancies are surprises anyway. Right. right? <laughs> and so you go through your pregnancy and you didn't know and you ate what you ate and you did what you did and you washed, you know, washed your hair with the products you used and, you know, okay, so then you have a baby. There, there's, it's not all doom and gloom after that. You turn it around as best you can, right. yeah. as best as you yeah. can afford. Right. We've all exactly. done it. We've all done it. Yeah. But so you were mentioning about the fiber and the microbiome. I know that when you eat higher amounts of fiber, that can eliminate some of the extra hormones in your body. Does mm-hmm. the toxins work that way too? If you eat a lot of fiber, does it help pull those out as well? It helps to squirt them out of the body. It attaches okay. to them and it squirts them out of the body. Okay. So it's, it's phenomenal, you know, in that sense. So that and keeping yourself hydrated, the fluids, because you've got to have the fluids to be able to carry waste in and out, you know, that and you want to be careful, you know, everything's a balance, you know, within, within your body, especially like, for example, sodium and potassium. If you go back to your period, periodic table, you know, high school (laughs) chemistry, right? They're both sodium and potassium are in group 1A. They have one electron in their outer shell. They react the same way. So you've got this, you know, sodium, you know, this cellular transports, you know, going in and out. So they need sodium and potassium to have that in that balance. And what happens now too, is that we're seeing this dramatic change because a lot of our uh, foods that we're eating, these processed crap has so much sodium in it that it's tipping that balance again, causing this imbalance in your body, you know, this mm-hmm. disruption. So I have a couple of questions just to wrap. <laughs> just a couple. Clearly we could talk oh, all night. Coming. Clearly we're talking. Like, so three rapid fire. Okay. What do you think is the end game for all of this? Knowing what you know about the chemicals and the length and the history and the impact and all of that, what do you think is the end game? The end game is you've got to you've got to get it to the mothers. You got to get this information to the future moms, you know, before they get pregnant. To me, that's the end game because we're going to have a chance of having healthy children in our future. We've got to educate the moms. We have to, and I think that's one of the biggest things because. Until you are educated, you you just don't understand the impact of what you're doing to yourself and to your future children. Okay. And from the other angle, what's the end game for the manufacturers of these products? 
they will fight tooth and nail for any kind of regulation. They will fight tooth and nail. There's, there's nothing that we can do except as consumers, we can vote with our dollar what products we will purchase. And frankly, to me, I would rather spend a few more dollars on products that I know that are not going to be toxic than spending thousands of dollars at the doctor's office, okay, and getting on the medical treadmill. Yeah. Because they're not going to be able to diagnose it. I mean, I, I know Deborah is is like one in a million who I said she Deborah Shapiro, she's the, the OBGYN that I connected with for the pregnancy advantage. She's one in a million in terms of like she had one client that had two miscarriages and she figured out it was because of mercury poisoning. She went above and beyond. Their doctors are not going to take that time. They want 10 minutes, 15 minutes with you, you know, when when you're dealing with with them. They don't have much time. You know, they can only give so much because they have to see so many patients in a given day, yada, yada, yada. And, and they're not trained. So, you know, you have to take, you're the one driving this bus, okay? Mm -hmm. This high-performance vehicle here. You're the one driving it. You get to make all the choices and whatnot. So you have to be able to make these decisions for yourself, but you have to be educated. They're, they're not going to change. They're not. So what we can do is vote with our dollars. Mm -hmm. and just say, I'm not going to accept, I'm not going to buy that. So using those apps to help you to figure out, to navigate it through. And as I said, if you want, I can give you help. And especially if you're dealing with skin problems and things like that, like eczema and, and whatnot, I can help you to deal with it, you know, holistically, naturally, you know, because your skin is just a reflection of you, you know, mm -hmm. of what's going on inside your body. Right. So, all right. If you could speak to the manufacturers, the head of the manufacturers of these products, what would you tell them? What would you want them to know? So they know, they know how toxic their products are. They know what these chemicals do. And I, all I can say is shame on you for putting this out there to us and making profit off of us, knowing that these are toxic. Shame on you. That's all I got. You know what, Jean? You're a warrior. I want to thank you so much for all your time and your dedication and your yes. expertise and that education. Yeah. <laughs> that education. Um, powerful, powerful work you're doing and powerful information you're delivering yes. for the betterment of the world and the children and everybody else in it. Yes, Beautiful. thank you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my pleasure. And thank you for doing what you guys are doing because, well, we're, we're on the same page. So yeah, we are. You go That's girls. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we're walking right next to you. We're yeah. right there. That's for sure.